Hi, I'm Errol Bord. You know, one of the really success stories in the Mardi Gras is a crew called Muses, which uh, first paraded in the year 2000, an all-female organization. It was not the first all-female organization in Carnival, but it was certainly the first all-female organization to take Carnival just in a whole different dimension with a lot of new creative ideas. In a short time, it's become one of the real, really popular uh, Carnival organizations. It, it parades on the Thursday night before Mardi Gras. And with me is uh, Virginia Saucy, who's one of the officers and organizers uh, in Muses. And we're going to talk about some of the throws in Muses, but again, this is one of these parades I want to emphasize that it's not all about the throws, even though the throws are great. This is a, a parade that actually does something with its floats, that it, it, uh, it, it does satire, and they're very creative. And so this is a parade that can hit you in a lot of different directions. So hi, Virginia. Hello, how are you, Errol? Okay, first of all, my, uh, I'm going to show... Uh, People, if they're wondering what you look like, I'm showing right now a picture that I took of you at the uh, Jazz Fest when you were, uh, when you had the booth where you were making those shoes. Yeah, we were very honored. Yeah. This, this was our yeah. fourth year that the Jazz Festival has yeah. um, recognized the Muses Glitter Shoes as a piece of original New Orleans folk art. So we do a demonstration every year and show the people how we make our glittered shoes. Yeah, by the way, you look absolutely great in this shot, too. So. Well, thank you. Uh, unfortunately, I have to take it down. The people are going to be seeing me, okay? <laughs> um, but anyway, but it's, uh, but it's a great shot. Let's, let's begin by talking talking about the shoes. This has become the symbol of the Muses organization. Uh, it's a, the last few years you've been doing this, right? Well, actually, um, I've been trying to be a bit of a Mardi Gras historian like you, and traced the shoes back and actually found a shoe that was decorated and thrown the very first year that we rolled in 2001. Um, we're hoping that it's soon going to be on display in the Mardi Gras exhibit at the State Museum. The, um, one of the members had seen the... I'm sorry, I have dogs in the house. One of the members had seen the, um, the new bead we were doing. That was the first year we did an inaugural ride bead that was a red high-heeled pump. That said, Muses 2001, and she actually went. Her name is Nicola Wolf. She went to um, Thrift City and bought some high-heeled shoes that looked like the shape of the shoe and the bead, and did them in homage to Zulu coconuts. Okay, and, and I, I'm holding up one uh, right now that uh, you gave me last year, and it, it's high heel. I guess it's a high heel pump, uh, but it's. Uh, but but the heel is uh, is an orangeish gold and the rest of it is green and blue and it has a, a little figure of an Egyptian uh, Egyptian goddess on, on the front of it. You know that must be one of the ones I did. Yeah, I think, <laughs> it, is. Year, I think it is. This last is year, year, kind of a premonition, I did a series of Egypt shoes right before right. the Egyptian people spoke up and revolted to create a new Egypt. So you woke up one morning and said, "Hey, I got a feel that something big is going to happen in Egypt in the next year. Let me, let me make some shoes." I found some great. You know, we do. We look for fun things to put on shoes, and it's it's grown amazingly. First, one woman does it in 2001. There's several other women who may have also done it that year, but by 2004, we had hundreds of our members making shoes, taking guidance from the original women that did it, and they've just evolved. Every shoe is totally different. The individual works of art made by our members. It is so much fun to do them that actually last night, at about 12.30, I had to kick some uses out of my garage. <laughs> my garage has become a full-time glitter studio because we love being together and laughing and decorating. It's like a modern-day sewing bee. And good for the shoe industry, I, I, I would think. But these are well, beautiful. Let's just say we don't throw, we, we're doing a lot for recycling with shoes. Because we don't throw the shoes away but when they when we wear them out. If you buy a really phenomenal pair of shoes, you wear them once and you can't walk in them, they suddenly become sure. glittered shoes. Um, one year, actually, Dillard's department store gave us all of their return shoes for a year. Um, and we spread them among the different floats and glittered them, and they became music shoes. Okay. Now, Michelle, the jazz fest, which you because what you were doing at the jazz fest, it, it, what the, the, one of the heritage tips is that you were actually making shoes and you were displaying, uh, making the shoes. And so this is a whole new one. Now, does everybody, uh, do you all throw these out uh, during the parade or do you just give them to people? Or? No, we hand them off the floats. Each member is given a limit. You know, the shoes do take up a lot of room on the float. Um, we have a limit of 30 shoes per member. Not all the members do them. I would guess <coughs> half of the 
987 riding members will make shoes. All right. Some will make one or two, some will make the whole limit of 30. But they're each really special, and obviously shoe quality control is something that's nearly impossible to control, and we don't want to stifle the creativity of the members. So some of them you get will be just remarkable. Some might be someone's first shoe. Sure. It varies. So, so this, is like, this is like a Zulu coconut in that people shouldn't go to the parade expecting they'll be getting a Zulu coconut because you can't have thousands of them. It, but but it's, I mean, they're personal items that are made, so if you get one, you should feel very pleased to have one. Oh, you should see the signs on the street on Muses Night. They're so spectacular. We actually have some posted on our Crowed Muses Facebook page. But people go out on the street and make these gorgeous glittered signs that say why they deserve a shoe. <laughs> and they're really irresistible. My favorite was from about two years ago. A young woman, made, a young girl, she must have been nine or ten years old, had a giant sign that said, Future Muse needs a shoe. Oh, God. Yeah. And from what I heard, she got about eight. <laughs> You just think how it was glittered, and people create great funny signs. I mean, I've seen men holding up signs that say, I always put the seat down. <laughs> I deserve a shoe. Yeah. I mean, it's hysterical. So we love it. People go to great lengths to get them. I personally, like, I keep bags of shoes at my reach. I like to give, I mean, of course, people that know me and know where I am in the parade, well, they expect a shoe. And then I like to give half of them just to total strangers to catch them off by surprise. You, you know, one of my favorite uh, objects in the Muses Parade, is when you see it coming, there's this big ball with, uh, that precedes the parade, and it has colors, and, uh, it's different colors, and y'all actually have a, a throw, which is a replica of that ball, I'm actually showing it right now, one from last year, and it, it's, uh, it, it, it changes colors, and there's a big one in the parade uh, that does this, this is really kind of a, a neat throw. Um, we love that. That's an amazing, we call it the Muses Parade Ball. It looks like the beginning of the parade. That, that's sort of the beginning of when people see that ball coming down the street, it's finally here. And um, it changes color six times, I think. It's just totally, it's a beautiful piece. One of our members actually found a similar toy out of town, and we hunted it down. Okay. I think what makes our throws really fun is our captain, Stacy Rosenberg, has an amazing sense. Um, there's Stacy, who's this brilliant attorney and outrageously organized captain that we're very fortunate she was the that founder. gave a big part of her life to the crew, has a lot of kid in her. Yeah. And she finds toys and collects them all year and then hunts them down to make them throws. I actually traveled with China to China with her in 2004 so we could seek out things that weren't expected. Right. I'm going to actually turn off the light for a moment so people can see the color change on this. So I'm, I'm holding up a... Uh, uh, what it really is, and so yeah, and so it does six different colors at, at a time. So, but it's really, and it's amazing. It's amazing. And it's so, uh, you say you go to China every year? No, we went, we've been to China once so okay. far. Okay. And it, some of the items that we found, it took us years to get to the parade route. Um, we've, there's things that we've wanted for years. Stacy for years has actually. Do you have you have a group of this year's throws? Yes. Well, I have think you could find the, the bouncing light-up glitter ball. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have that because that's somebody took it, all right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> okay. that's a popular one. But, that, but, but that's, a, that's a fun thing. I'll tell you one thing you had that really surprised me. I think this is really cool and probably the most functional Mardi Gras throw of all time. It's a Muses Band-Aid box. Now, I know Band-Aids are trademarked, and so we're supposed yeah, to see it. Yeah, it's Muses to the Rescue Sterile Band-Aid. Yeah, okay. This it's, was a great Stacy Rosenberg innovation, too. It, Stacy. It, went band-aid crazy. She kept finding all these fun, adorable band-aids. She has nieces and nephews. They love that she always has fun band-aids. Stacey actually really wanted to do these this year. They're great. They're adorable. In fact, I gave a box of them to a friend's five-year-old Friday night, and yesterday he came in for the parade covered in them. Oh, He's really? Faking injury for 48 now, hours. Now, in the box, okay, uh, it's a tin box, but the actual... Band, okay, they're really adhesive strips, but we call them band-aids, but we know it's a copyrighted thing. Yeah, so, yeah. so things they, that are uh, like band-aids, okay. okay, but but, uh, but they also have the Muses logo on them, and the writing on the on the box uh, says, I'm stuck on Muses because Muses is stuck on me. This is really great. Thank you, and then wave the front, because they're adorable. It says, like, a kiss from a muse. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, you know, yeah, kiss from amuse can make you feel better. It's, it's really, and this is something totally functional. I mean, this is something, you know, sometimes after carnival parade, you get all this stuff and you say, what am I going to do with this? Well, this you keep. I mean, this is really uh, something good. Well, we love to create. There's two different kinds of throws. Um, there's instant gratification throws that you can just put on right away and you love. Okay. There's also um, throws that we want you to keep using all year, and we're really proud of our throws that you can keep using all year. Well, I'm about to show a throw that, that in, in all truthfulness, it's been by my desk all year just in case of an emergency. And this is Amuse's Yo-Yo. Uh, that I got from last year, and it's actually been my desk all year long, and so. Uh, you have a yo-yo emergency. Yeah, yeah, you know, sometimes you have it. You say, "Man, I gotta go yo-yo," you know, and so, uh, and so I've, uh, I've had that. Uh, I have. Uh, this is from a few years ago. There's a Amuses doubloon, that is. Uh, okay, with your uh, yours. Well, oh, stop doing the brands a few years back. This is from 2007. Amuses doubloon. Uh, so, uh, you know, that must have been the last year we did the balloons. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah the, yeah, the balloons across the board, people say, are kind of losing interest in uh, a little bit. But you all do some really great things. In the background, I have uh, a stuffed pelican from Muses and a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. so, I think well, this year we brought back one of our most popular utilitarian throws. It's a Muses bottle opener and flashlight on a bead. Yeah, I saw that. The okay. ultimate Mardi Gras throw. Okay. What could you need? Actually, I have one thing. I don't know what it is, okay? It's on the bead, okay? And it's like this plastic thing, and you open it, actually, we'll figure out how to get it. It looks like a pen, as you can write with, but you push it, and the light goes off or something. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. You write with it, it lights up. It's a use shoe pen. Okay, it's a shoe pen, all right. When you write with it, it lights up. Yeah, okay, that's what it is, all right. Okay. And it has a shoe at the very top. Those are fun. Oh, Last year we did a use of notebook, so we have to do some use okay. of pens to go with it. So I'm actually doing a Another difference. pen we're doing this year that I think you're probably going... Did you see the floater pen? Oh, uh, no, I didn't see that one. Okay, it's a floating pen? There's a pen that's like reminiscent of retro pens okay. that you buy them okay. at souvenir stations. And when you tilt the pen, the parade, the music shoe in the bathtub will roll past the crowd. Okay. So, like, if ever you're, you're a spy or something, you need to write something, you get this pen right here, and you can keep it around your neck all the time, and then when you write, the light goes off. It's perfect. Actually, it might reveal where you are, though, and so, <laughs> so be careful. Good, but, but, good but, to keep next to your bed in case you have a great Absolutely. Yeah, when, uh, when you have those great thoughts. All right. It's, uh, we get the point. You all do really great imaginative throws, but you also do a good job with themes. That you all do uh, a good satire. Can you give us any uh, uh, any hints what, what to look for this year? Well, um, let's just say it's, it's kind of the year of the bling. Okay. It's a very, um, I, mean, I think it's one of those themes um, that only a women's crew can get away with. Okay. All right. It's very us. So okay. we're really excited about this year. We've, um, um, I, we have, I host the annual theme meeting where I always say the theme is like a joke with 23 punchlines. And I've never had so many brilliant ideas come from our membership. This year was amazing. Okay. So... When you see the Muses Parade, I keep urging people, we've been talking about these throws, but look at the floats and look at the little jokes along the line of what they're trying to say because these people really work at humor. You know, I mean, there are some parades that just like rent third hand floats and they really just throw a generic theme to it and it's just not good. But this is a good parade. Uh, it has good floats with good decorations and, and that, that, that really says something. And another thing I really like about Muses too is that Muses has opened the opportunity for a lot of walking groups. Uh, they wouldn't really have had an outlet had not been for uh, uh, for Muses. The Rolling Alvi comes to mind, and who else do y'all have? The Pussy Footers, the, Pussy the Camel Footers. Toe Lady Steppers, yeah, uh, Bearded Oysters. Bearded Oysters. What's, what's fun is what we want to do is, is what we want to do when we first created the crew was get other people involved in Mardi Gras. And what Dion Randolph, our chairman who does logistics and marching troops and bands, did was she really kept that goal in mind, and we've allowed people who weren't a part of Mardi Gras to join in the fun. And that's what we hope to do to have the most entertaining parade you'll ever see. You know, it's absolutely worked because Muses, there's humor to it. I mean, if you watch what you, what you do in terms of the floats, but also these groups that Muses give an opportunity to participate, there's a lot of creativity out there that doesn't necessarily have the resources or the time to organize a parade with floats, but they can organize marching groups. And so you've got some really funny marching groups. 
And I, I, that's something I wish all parades would realize, that in addition to everything else, you got to make people laugh. I mean, it's got to be fun to see you parade. Well, you know, in New Orleans, we have a if you don't laugh, you cry mentality. So yeah. we like to, um, we put fun at some of our own weaknesses in the city and in ourselves. Now, uh, I know from the very beginning, uh, you all have always said you've had a, a waiting list. I think you're riding 1,100 people this year. Is that correct? Or? Actually, we're riding 987 muses. Not 987. We have about 1,100, about 1,000 on the non-riding list. Okay. Some of them are there by choice. They've ridden for many years. They want to be a part of it. So they could stay at the non-riding level. And then others are waiting to ride. Okay. Then we had to close our membership in 2010 because the, mem the waiting list had gotten so big, we didn't, we want to be able to recycle through it, and so we stopped adding new people for a while. Now, there's another new female crew, uh, Nix, that's bringing this year. Is this with the blessing of muses, or...? Uh... Oh, definitely. You know, when we first started, when we were putting our parade together in 2000 and our crew together, um, support from another crew was so greatly appreciated. Zulu, Toad, several of them really stood behind us, showed us, uh, and Damien, they showed us the ropes. Um, so we greatly appreciate appreciated their help. So of course, Nick's we supported Nick's from the beginning because we know it was hard. And a lot of the women they wanted to be in uses, and we closed our membership. So I, a group of us, we're, all the officers will definitely be cheering on Nick's. A lot of our members are upset because we're loading our our floats that night. But um, we're going to all try to make an effort, take turns loading floats, so that everybody can get to see them and cheer them on. And uh, for whatever success Nix has, its success has to be in a large part due to Muses, which set an example, which we, we, we uh, which really you know gave a footprint for it. I'll be the footprint maybe to be the uh, with a be to choose. So, uh, so you pray on Thursday night. To, to me, that's maybe my favorite night of parades because uh, uh, it starts with the Babylon parade, which is a good it's beautiful just, parade. Uh, it, it's an old-fashioned parade. And if you go to Babylon, you say, oh, these floats aren't big, you know, like in Dimmy and Abacus. You're missing the point because that's what parades used to be like. And so I love seeing the Babylon parade. Then there's the Chaos Parade, which is... Uh, a real inspiration to us. Uh, yeah, it, it, it is. It, 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 was, it, it descended from Moments, which was the original satirical parade, and it's carried on that tradition of the Moments Parade. And then there's your parade. And I always get a sense that when I'm out there that Thursday night, that... Uh, your parade is the real showstopper that you really got a sense it's like you know people love these other parades but you know here comes muses and well I will them. tell you that, that we got rained out um, years ago and but, um, Chaos and Babylon invited us to roll with them on Thursday and I, they enjoyed it the captains actually called and said y'all should be on Thursday Absolutely. so I think together we've created a really a combination of the beautiful traditional parades satire and just revelry so we think it's a great night of fun what do you do the day, the day after are you just I recover <laughs> you think awesome? okay. um, i actually live on the parade route I'm, i love mardi gras it's in my blood i can't wait to see hermes and crudita and morpheus the crudita is also a big inspiration of satire it always has been and momus I mean, i'm sorry and hermes is just one of the most Stunning, beautiful parades of all time. I really miss getting to see Babylon and Chaos. Yeah. By the way, if anybody has uh, access to the uh, the Times picking in from Saturday, the inside outside section, which is about homes, features of Virginia on the cover that they talk about her house, which is on the parade route. You can see and, the garage. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice house. So anyway, Kim, okay, hold up your picture one more time, just so people can see you. And, and there you are with your floats right there and all this. So. Uh, Grace, I'll be masked on Thursday night, and I do want people to remember, um, we do a phenomenal handout, because you know, people are so busy trying to catch everything, and we have great throws, like always, but the, um, in the beginning of the parade, the Big Easy Roller Girls are handing out sort of a cheat sheet to our whole parade okay. that is very theme-related, right. so be sure to try to get one of those, the members also have them to throw. Where are you riding in the parade? I'm on the officer's float. Okay. And, uh... Neutral ground or street side? I'm always, I'm, I moved to the neutral ground a few years ago when I bought a house on the neutral ground side. Okay. My whole family is on the neutral ground. Okay, all right. And, and the, what do you all do after the parade? Do you have like a party that night or just... We don't do a ball like most crews. We have an amusement. Okay. okay. It's a private party that the members have and the members invite their friends. Yeah. And um, we get off the floats and go straight into the party. It's easy, it's fun. 
And it's just who we are. We're not really the um, the white gloves type. Yeah, well, I'd stand. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah. But we do great. We try to get together all year long. Um, this year, I don't know if you heard about the, the ride we auctioned off on eBay. Um, we auctioned a ride off for eBay to benefit the Young Survivors Coalition. Okay. Um, the, the ride, which was valued at $770, sold for $8,900. <laughs> Eight thousand nine hundred dollars. We yeah, just run away, so we're going to be able to send a lot of young women to. It's a support conference for young women with cancer. So it was one ride. One, one ride. person, one ride. Eight thousand nine hundred dollars. No beads included. No throws. Just one ride. Do you know where the person was from? She's from San Francisco. Um, she her, she lost her mother to cancer. Okay. So the charity cause the cause meant a lot to her, yeah. and she um, really wanted to. Well, a friend of hers is in the parade, so they're going to be able to ride together. I and mean, a number of the members have made shoes for her to throw. Okay. And then we have Patricia Clarkson, who's our first ever every muse, because she's a great New Orleanian, so a local lady. That's a new position on the staff. It's called the right. okay. okay. Okay, well, great. Well, look, I, I think it's time she let the dogs out, uh, so to speak. Well, uh, people see. are lining up for the parade, okay, and right. the dogs are getting uh, excited. Okay. okay. Well, I'm excited about the parade this week. We'll be looking for it. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much. Everybody have a wonderful Mardi Gras. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.